Ravi Datla writes, Hi, can you please do an analysis of the H. Moser and Chi streamliner tree hands? Designer notes, subject 37. This channel is sponsored by you. Like, comment, and subscribe for content you'd like to see next. The Odoma Piguet Royal Oak set the standard for the stainless steel sports watch that many watch brands have tried to imitate, aspire to, and, near impossibly so, surpass in design. Many have tried and failed through the years, making us think if it's even going to happen in our lifetime. Along comes H. Moser and T Streamliner Center Seconds. Let us convince you why you're looking at the next iconic sports watch. H. Moser and T is a haute horology brand that offers the best quality and handiwork expected of top tier watchmaking, but at a relatively heavy emphasis on relatively there attainable prices. To put things simply, for the price of an AP Royal Oak, you can get one of Moser's pieces that can offer so much more, like the Streamliner. It's an elegant stainless steel watch that perfectly blends the nostalgic feeling of the 70s era design ideals with handcrafted touches on the movement, bracelet, and case. The dimensions of the case are just a tad larger than the magic number at 40 mm with a thickness of 11 mm with the sapphire crystal included. The surface of the case has a sunburst finish that is an extension of the same finish on the dial. This sunburst finish plays with the light of the case, creating a halo effect over the curved edge. These brush lines also create shadows that further highlights the halo effect. The shape of the case is a clear departure from the modern linear aesthetics that's sprinkled with curved corners. It's such a soft curve that your eye is fooled to think if it's a curved line at all. The sides of the case are also brushed but horizontally. Visually, it is not the attraction but rather it's sandwiched between two nicely polished steps. In the middle of this case side is a conventional crown marked with an M for Moser. It may not have crown guards, but it is a screw-down crown capable of 100 meters of water resistance. This forms a channel in between the case that's in the same visual line as the bracelet, but it contrasts itself from the bracelet's finish. It's a clear conscious effort to set the case apart from the fastening mechanism. Even though its purpose is clearly to hold the watch in place on your wrist, the bracelet here also holds your attention quite strongly. It's one of the most strikingly beautiful bracelets in recent memory. There is such a balanced amount of visual interest and technical execution all over this band. The whole band is satin finished from end to end. The links in between are mirror polished beginning from the case itself down to every link. This integrated bracelet is also uniquely angled as it approaches its edges. Many call it a lobster or centipede pattern. It's organic, suffice to say, and it looks great. The bevel on the edges is also mirror finished, reminiscent of the Royal Oak bracelet. All in all, the bracelet creates a wonderful interplay of light with its contrasting finish that reminds us why AP is on top of the stainless steel sports category. On the technical side, the bracelet is quite comfortable with its generous range of motion along with the stooping direction of the first link in the case of the watch. We are treated with a butterfly clasp that with one end is engraved with the Moser shield. This is probably the weakest point of the design for the watch. It feels like an afterthought to include this shield by engraving it on. This shield would have better been suited with its own physical shield that's seated between the clasp seam. Aside from the minor gripe with the clasp that honestly no one would notice anyway, much can be noticed on the dial. The dial is currently only available in matrix green as Moser christened it, but it's a beautiful green indeed. Moser is fast becoming known for its finely crafted dials and this one is no exception. Under a macro lens, you will notice that this is a speckled dial, but this fine detail seems to sit underneath a sunburst finish. 
couple this with a fumé or gradient tone and you've got a dial that's not just pleasing to the eye but frankly mesmerizing. According to Edward Malin, CEO of Moser, they originally tried various colors for the dial after they conceived the Streamliner Flyback, which was released a few months earlier. What they found was that because of its vibrant colors, it reflected the light too much, which took away from the simplicity of the dial. And because of this, they chose to finish it in a sunburst finish instead of a vertical brushing compared to the Streamliner Flyback. It did inherit the checkered minute gradations that are divided into quarters as opposed to the one-sixth of a second scale on the flyback. Added to this checkered track are rounded hour batons with a double baton at the 12 o'clock position. These are layered in shape but not loomed. What is loomed are the hands. Using Moser's own ceramic-based luminous material, Global Light, the hand gained some volume on top of its long extended figures. The checkered scale, the rounded baton markers, and the extended hands display the automotive inspiration of the watch. Not devoid of inspiration is the HMC 200 movement that Moser used on this Streamliner Center Seconds. It has a skeletonized gold rotor over the handcrafted movement that has a 72-hour power reserve, 27 joules, and beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour. All of the edges on the bridges and plate are mirrored polish and the surfaces are treated with the Moser double stripe pattern. Another thing notable to this piece and pretty much most of Moser's offerings are the parts used. In-house caliber movements are often worn as a badge of honor in the watch industry as much as a marketing catchphrase. But with enough research, you would find out that only a select few can truly claim that their watches were made within their own closed doors. Moser is one of them. This means that even the unsuspecting yet very essential part such as the hairspring is manufactured by Moser itself. Well, Moser's sister company, Precision Engineering AG. But you know what I mean. This hairspring is modular making it easier to remove, not needing to disassemble the whole movement, and reduces the cost of repairing the watch significantly. On the topic of costs, this watch retails at $33,000. It's not exactly affordable, but looking at what it's up against, the Patek 5711 at $40,000, the Lang Odysseus, which is also at $40K, and most Royal Oaks, the Streamliner is a bargain. Also worth considering is that this sports watch is readily available at any Moser retailer. Unlike the Streamliner Flyback which was made at a limited run of 100 pieces, the Streamliner Center Seconds will be kept in production. In fact, Moser is intent on making more versions of this new line of sports timepieces. But that doesn't mean that the Streamliner will flood the market. Moser still maintains a limited production per year as a small, independent operation that it is. It's got the appeal, the craftsmanship, the historical cachet, and limited production. And now, it's also garnering the acclaim of experts and fans alike. We've seen this before back in 1972, only in a less disrupted way. The Streamliner is dashing towards one of the best releases in 2020 and probably in the last few years. It's nipping at the heels of the top sports brands and we can see why. It's one of those undeniably great designs that build up a reputation as the months and years go by. In a way, it mirrors H. Moser and T's own rise to fame and prestige. Icons represent their chosen fields. The Streamliner represents Moser, and a few years from now, it could represent the Steel Sports Watch. <laughs>